We trot onto the second floor of a large lobby, overlooking a floor covered in crates and containers. Magical projections showed the company logo in the empty office space. There were mattresses all over the balcony, and spent beam cartridges were littered all over the place. To our right, I could see a battered door and elevator. Down below, I heard voices raised. I don't care if we can't move it until those rangers are taken care of. If you want to speed things up, then fly out there and help. The irate mare was an albino unicorn who had a streaked rainbow paint over her body and mane. She wore barding that was half armor and half something that shop we'd rested in earlier. To be honest, I barely paid attention to her. All of it was on the buck in the power armor she was speaking to. Operative Light Hooves. The Enclave's not yet prepared to engage in open hostilities with the Rangers, Diamond. Our arrangement was with you. And you have yet to fulfill your end of the agreement. The Pegasus replied calmly and reasonably. He had two power-armored Pegasus troopers with him. And Diamond had a half-dozen fillies around her. We need those systems. I don't care what you need. I care about what I need. I'm the Diamond Flash of the Flash fillies. My needs are more important. We need your verta thingy to haul some weaponry to Big Daddy, she said, and she swung her hooves imperiously. Now stop wasting my time with stupid questions, or you'll never get those talismans. Talismans? What kind of talismans? What did Light Hooves want with talismans? And why wasn't I pulling a bullet through his head right now? Because I would get his killed, Blackjack. And you're not an assassin. Damn. Two good reasons. Slowly, we moved along the balcony towards the elevator. Most of the gems in the control panel were dark. But those in the lobby, the second floor, and top floors were lit. No matter how much I pushed the button to the top floor, though, the car wasn't moving. Damn. I scowled at the keyhole next to the button. It was so tiny that I doubted a bobby pin would fit. Why was everything never easy? We needed a key. Diamond had a key on her barding. Diamond was also surrounded by her gang, light hooves, and two power-armored pegasi. One of those would have to go down there and get it. Any ideas? Just one. But it wasn't going to be pretty. I hate this. I hate you. I hate every pony. Peter went on protested as Glory tugged the filly's uniform further down his flank. Lacuna was working some magic to help straighten his mane while I worked Glory's mane brush through it. Scotch smeared some of the flasher paint on him in an approximation of sparkler, who stood frozen nearby, watching with shocked amazement. You're the only pony who can do this, I reminded him. My leg braces are too conspicuous. He'd recognize Glory. Lacuna's too big, and Scotch has a pip buck. You're the same color, and almost the same size. His anger was just barely covering his face, his fear and discomfort, at the four of us dressing him up. Glory was taking great care not to set him off with a careless touch back there. Go down, get the key, meet us in the elevator. Get the key. Just like that, he muttered. Gee, you make it sound so easy. I sighed and looked him in the eye. P21, if you really don't want to do this, tell me. We'll figure something else out. Maybe we could just take them by surprise? That was a lot of ponies to try and surprise, though. He sighed and looked back. No, I can do this. Just... If something goes wrong, I don't want to fail you again, Blackjack. He rubbed his regenerated forehooves against each other. Then don't, I replied with a smile. And don't worry about failing me. Yeah. Worry about getting caught, he muttered. There wasn't much difference between him and Sparkler now, and the mare was just watching us with a disturbed look. He trot to Sparkler, who tried to pull back, but... With her hooves glued to the floor, well, he whispered something in her ear, and her eyes widened. She nodded absently, then stared and glared. But that seemed to be answer enough. Some things never change, he muttered, and then took a deep breath. Just promise me. Whatever happens, do not start shooting. All right. 
and that made me even more apprehensive about this plan. It would have been one thing if it were me down there, but P-21 seemed to know what he was doing. Please, know what you're doing, P-21. We moved over to the elevator as I watched him... her... damn it. Where'd he learn to walk like that? Walk down towards the meeting with a casual step. And just another flasher coming up to back up her boss. Nothing unusual. Just turning towards her pockets. Bitch! Diamond roared as she wheeled on P-21. The other fillies turned on him. Instantly, I brought my gun up, sighted her skull, and nearly took her head off before I saw P-21 looking back at me as he was set upon by her guards. Then he was saying something about turning over technology to its rightful owners. I couldn't quite make it out amid the babble. Suddenly, Diamond's lips curled into a nasty smile. Oh, so the rangers sent one of their little spies. Come here to free your brother, she snickered. Sucks to be you. Now I have a new boy toy. I saw the tremor run through him and licked my lips in apprehension, moving the crosshairs from him back to her. Lightus frowned as he looked at P-21, then as the, at the paint-smeared boss, Maine. We need to kill him. Word can't get out that I'm assisting you. Now my rifle was on him, but ugh, why couldn't I snipe eight ponies at once? His demand, however, prompted an even nastier smirk from Diamond. If you want him dead sooner, then you'd better get that vertibuck here and get those guns to Big Daddy. We're going to wipe the rangers out of the hoof once and for all. Then you can take your VC idiots back up to the clouds where you belong. And the status quo is preserved, he finished, frowning at P-21. You'll be sure to dust him when you're finished playing. Well, I have to share him first. Give the other ladies a ride. Then I'll dust him. It'll be over in a flash, Diamond said as the unicorn floated a key out from under her neck and passed it to one of the other guards. Take him upstairs. While you're up there, you can have the other one. I'm done with him. The unicorn god guard prodded P-21 with her beam pistol, and he rose sullenly to his hooves. So, you've got a vertibuck to call and two rangers outside to go dust. I have to make sure it's ready to move, she said, and then feigned remembrance. Oh, yes. And get you those worthless talismans. Honestly, doesn't the Enclave have targeting talismans of their own? Of course. And they are very carefully inventoryized. I need talismans that are off the books. He said slowly and carefully as P-21 was marched to the lobby elevator. Enclave Games. Honestly... Diamond said as she trot towards the guarded door, with Light Who's following in her wake. The elevator doors beneath us chimed faintly, and then opened. A moment later, they closed again. I tapped the gem beside the elevator doors on our level, and they opened. The flasher stared at me in shock, just long enough for me to slam Taurus's rifle butt into her face. In seconds, we pony-piled into the now-cramped elevator. I looked down at P-21. You plan on getting caught? I asked Sparkler if Diamond was always get shot first at the bucks she captured. He replied with a smile. I figured it was an alpha mare thing. I squealed in glee, hugging him tight. I love a smart pony. He gasped. Touching? Too much touching. I released him, both of us flushing. The elevator rose up to the top floor, and my jaw dropped. I would only come across a hoof full of places that were actually clean. But this wasn't just clean. This was spotless. Shiny, even. I got to the side of it and immediately felt my mane start to crawl. The reception room was a polished marble. The walls decorated with glowing magical lines of green, blue, and red. Magnificent wooden doors beckoned with gems glittering before me, as if tantalizing me with what lay beyond. What is this? I asked, then looked back at the uh, concussed guard. Damn, now I wish I hadn't hit her so hard. We trot out into the pristine space, 
as clean as it looked, it still had the meek, uh, rusty musk of nastiness below. There was a primly dressed mare behind the desk, next to the door. She looked up from her magazine and smiled pleasantly. Hello. I'm sorry, but Miss Diamond isn't available at the moment. If you're here for an appointment, I'll try to reschedule. I apologize for any inconvenience this has caused you. I gaped at her in shock, then arched my brow. Um, we don't have an appointment? I replied lamely. Oh, well then, welcome to Flash Industries, home to many amazing and miraculous magical products. I'm sorry, but Miss Diamond isn't available at the moment. I'm sorry, but all senior staff are unavailable at the moment. If you would like to schedule an appointment, I will be happy to do so. If you would like to wait, I'll be happy to answer any and all questions you might have about Flash Industries until some pony is available to see you. The white mare smiled and then stared at me with her blue eyes. She reminded me of a cleaner, nicer version of the mare below. Your diamond's secretary? Gloria asked with a concerned frown. I am an automated, photonic answering machine based on Miss Diamond's secretary, Miss Beryl. I am afraid that Miss Beryl is out of the office at this time. Would you like me to contact her for you? The projection asked brightly. No, Gloria said quickly, and then looked back at me. Notice the resemblance? P-21 nodded, and I looked from one to the other. What? I'm guessing that Diamond downstairs is a descendant of Miss Diamond's secretary. The system thinks she's still alive. I pointed at the mare behind the desk. And then, what is that? Scotch tape trotted up to the mare and stretched out her hoof. The mare flickered in place as she smiled pleasantly down at the filly waving her hoof back and forth inside the hologram. Cool! So, she was projection too. Like the professor. Only a machine. I need to get inside Miss Diamond's office real quick. I'm sorry, but that is not allowed. If you would like to wait until Miss Diamond is available, or schedule an appointment, please do so now. The projection sighed brightly. What are you? Scratch tape asked. A ghost? The projection regarded her fondly. I am an example of some of the most exciting holographic projection technology developed at Flash Industries. Although we are well known for our line of magical personal defense equipment, Flash Industries is also a leading developer of light manipulation magic. Thanks to our partnership with the Ministry of Arcane Te Sciences, Flash Industries has worked to produce our latest and most exciting creations. What kind of creations? Gloria asked. I'm sorry, but you'll have to be more specific. Are you interested in our personal defense equipment, holographic technology, magic shielding technology, or other technology? The projection asked in a slightly condescending tone. I was about to ask about Project Steel Pony when Glory said, Personal defense technology? Do you mean weapons? The project frowned. Flash industry dislikes the negative connotation associated with that term. Our personal defense products are designed with the intention of protecting our users from harm through the application of potent, pinpoint magical force. While most famous of our bream weaponry, we also have branched out to alternative magical effects. However, please be aware that such items must be contracted through the military or Ministry of Awesome sales representative. So they didn't like the term weapon. Surprise, surprise. What about... What are holograms? Scotch tape asked, then shrunk back a little at my eye twitch and faint growl. What? 